Well, PaizoCon is over, but the news just doesn't stop. So we now have the four additional ancestries that are going to be available in Howl of the Wild. On the Paizo community blog, they just released a new post called Meet the Cast of the Zootrope. And they kind of go through the cast and every single cast member is from a different race. So let's go ahead and go through them. My name is Don. I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist. And let's go ahead and get into it. With Howl of the Wild, in addition to the monsters and wilderness-inspired items and feats and a bunch of other stuff, it comes with six new playable ancestries. And each one of these is represented by a member of the crew of the Zoetrope. So we're going to go ahead and go through them all. I'll go ahead and put the picture up and then we can talk about it as we go. The first one that we're going to go over is someone that we met before, Branthet, who the naturalist, who is kind of the captain and he is an Oruxi. He is the expedition leader who brings this crew together to travel across Galerion in his search for the four wardens of the wild. These four wardens of the wild are mythic creatures said to steward the great biomes of the planet. So the Oruxi are a lizard folk who will be getting a remaster in Player Core 2. Then we go on to Charklia, the scribe, the Minotaur. Now, she is the one, if you remember, who does the Darwinist type drawings of the creatures. So if we see drawings like that, it will be coming from her. She is from the Earthsong people on the Isle of Kortos. She's the research assistant to Baranthet. Take notes, does a field illustrations of each of the animals that the ship comes across. Now, Minotaurs have a number of abilities to emphasize their strength, like an ability where they can fling allies across the field with their horns. Not to mention some skill with stonework, as well as some lore, some feats, some skills that have to do with labyrinth. Now, let's go ahead and move on to the next one that we already know about, Tellero the Scout Centaur. He's a swift centaur, goes ahead of the ship to make sure that the way is clear for the scientists to follow. Very capable, if a little hot-headed. This was mentioned kind of a little bit in the ancestry that they previewed, but eager to prove himself. In addition to their speed, centaurs also have feats related to herbalism or archery. And this specifically mentions the skill that Tellero puts to good use with a number of signal arrows. Now we start getting into the new races. Lythia the Navigator is a merfolk. Very skilled in navigation, Lythia, a merfolk blown from her home, though she's sure to treat everyone with joy and laughter. It is an aquatic ancestry with a bunch of magical talents. Shaping wind, shaping water, crying pearls, and beguiling others with their siren song. They do mention a new item that she has that is called the Little Sea, which is a new item for aquatic creatures debuting in Howl of the Wild. Another new ancestry is represented by Greyfu the cook. The race is the Athamaru, although Greyfu is the ship's cook. Greyfu is gruff and stoic, but loyal often wordlessly giving an extra scoop of stew or, or slice of flatbread to a crewmate who's had a hard day. The Umaru are an amphibious people primarily located in the undersea nation of Zaidao in Tianjia. They're highly communal with a more physical bent, whether it's trying to keep coral symbiotes that can cleanse poisons from the blood, communicating with pheromones, or training pet eels to aid them. Moving on to our next ancestry, we have Dr. Palm, the doctor, and he is an awakened animal. This particularly mentions that he, while the crew are scientists, not fighters, people are bound to get a few scrapes on a long voyage. Dr. Palm has a very caring bedside manner and a highly competent level of medical knowledge. She is an awakened animal, a sand badger, in her case specifically, a highly versatile new ancestry that allows you to play an animal that has gained sapience. And the last new race that we have is one that was created for Howl of the Wild, and that is the Cirque. And it is represented by a character whose name is, whose antenna is askew, but goes by the name Ten the Mechanic. Apparently he's an accident-prone mechanic. There's Cirque, a brand new ancestry designed from the ground up for Howl of the Wild. Cirques are subterranean people who burrow to Galarian surface only in periodic generational digs the most recent of which was triggered by the closing of the world wound. Cirques ambiently absorb magic, 
metamorphosizing later in life with unique adaptations based on what they've absorbed. And this particular race is excited to experience every new thing that they can on the surface, though sometimes that leads them into trouble. So now we finally know all the ancestries that are going to be available in Howl of the Wild, and I'm pretty excited for this book to come out. We're going to find out more information at Gen Con, so I'll be sure to go ahead and pay attention to that, and I'll try and do a new summary when they come out, when this more more detailed information comes out. Fantastic news and a little bit more information about the new ancestries that are coming out in Howl of the Wild. I hope you like this little quick little video here. And if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell for any new news that is coming out. But whatever you do, I hope you have a great day and happy adventuring. Thanks.